evening we have Kevin Agerth once again sharing with us ways to make our marriages better, which I know is helping me quite a bit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's still smiling, so this always, is good. always look to your spouse for approval after you make a blanket statement. <laughs> I learned that from his speeches. All right. Resentment, the key to a great marriage. Kevin Agerth. Kevin Agerth, resentment, a key to a great marriage. Resentment, the key to a great marriage. You're probably saying, you got to be kidding me. Resentment, really? And, you know, I'm only partially kidding you. Because there's a big difference between short-term resentment, which is good or tolerable, versus long-term resentment. Good versus bad. So let's dive into the context of the matter here. Last time I was speaking with you guys, we talked about a reference couple, Eric and Jill. And we talked about how Eric would leave his clothes, mainly his socks, on the ground, and how that terribly bothered Jill. So when he'd get ready for bed in the evening, he'd just take his socks off, you know, throw them in the corner, wherever was convenient. Got in that habit, and it just really bothered really bothered Jill, and the question was, what should we do about it? My recommendation was for Eric to get into another kind of habit, that he should pick his socks up and put them away. And a very interesting discussion that happened afterwards, when somebody had mentioned, yeah, but what about resentment? Like if he has to do something he doesn't really want to do, could there be some resentment involved with that? And you know, there really could be a very brief period of resentment when Eric is doing something, when he's putting his socks in the hamper and he doesn't really want to do that. And there's a brief period of resentment while he's forming that new habit of putting them in the clothes hamper. The alternative would be Jill's long-term resentment. In fact, it could go on for a lifetime if he continues to do it all the time, just throw them on the floor. Not only that, but knowing that Jill is terribly bothered by that, if he continues to do it, it's like a compounding negative effect. Not only is he doing the thing that terribly bothers her, but he's doing it knowing that it terribly bothers her. So it's like a double whammy. If someone's going to feel resentment in the marriage, as an expert, I would rather have Eric experience short-term resentment as he's developing a new habit than have Jill experience long-term resentment over an entire lifetime, over an entire marriage. So how do we get Eric to change this habit? Just very basic habit formation. How does basic habit formation happen? Anybody have any ideas here? Repetition. Perfect. I've got that in my notes. Any other ideas? Well, I'm gonna How's the reinforcement? Hey, I've got that in my notes too. All right. Repetition. So, perfect. Eric could take a, a, a Saturday, block out in the afternoon, sit down in the corner of the bed where he does every night, but this is a Saturday afternoon, take his socks off, throw them in the hamper. You can even make a game out of it, like shoot baskets, right? Now here's the catch. You go right back to the hamper, take them out, put them back on your feet, sit down on the edge of the bed, do it again, and again, and again. Now this might sound really silly, but if you take a Saturday afternoon and you do this, you'll do it about a hundred times. And I'll guarantee you that night when Eric sits down on the edge of the bed, worn out, and he's ready to go to sleep. He's done it a hundred times before. He'll take those socks off, and it will feel so natural to throw them right in that basket as he sees the smile on his wife's face, on Jill's face. Repetition, that's huge. And then, of course, Jill. Jill, I would encourage you to give lots and lots of credit to Eric for this. He's taking time out of a Saturday. He could be fishing, could be hunting, could be doing all kinds of fun things. Now, for all those Jills out there in the world that would say, Eric should have been doing this all along. Why should I give him any, why should I give him credit for that? It's just what people should do. Well, you know, we want to have a good marriage. 
So encouraging behavior you want more of is definitely going to get you more of it. Positive reinforcement. If Jill says, hey, you know, I, I know you spent all Saturday afternoon. It's nice outside. You're developing a new habit. You're doing this for me. So I feel really loved by that. I really appreciate that. I want to let you know that I appreciate your effort. And now that your socks are off and the lights are going off, maybe there'll be a reward. So positive reinforcement is always awesome. You know, Eric, he might feel a little bit controlled. If it's handled wrong, he might feel a little bit controlled by Jill. You know, there's a big difference in control versus contribution. Control versus contribution. Let's take a look at control for a second. What is control? Control is when a per person demands something of you. You must Pick your socks up off the floor. You have to do that. That's a demand. It typically does not work in marriage. What's another kind of demand? Well, it's something that's like a question or phrased as a question, but there's a little consequence attached at the end. You know, please do this, but if you don't, I'm not gonna talk to you for a week. That's actually a demand. That's covert demand. So, we don't want to do control, but what we want to do is dig into a little bit below the surface. So what I'd like to help Eric out with is just understanding this very logically. What's happening here? What's happening in this circumstance? Socks on the floor equals a love unwinder, a terrible love unwinder. A love unwinder equals destroying Jill's emotional feeling of love for Eric. So the question is, do you want your wife to love you or not? <laughs> do you want your wife? <laughs> so when you look at it in those terms, then Eric can say to himself, you know, I do want her to love me. So I, I want to change. There's no need for her to control me. I want to instead contribute to her. So it's just by understanding what is really happening below the surface when you just do what you want to do with disregard for others. And when you can really understand the nuts and bolts of it, all of a sudden you'll want to do things for your spouse. You'll want to contribute to them instead of make, not contributing and perhaps then they'll be tempted to try to control you. So friends, I hope tonight you've understood the difference between short-term versus long-term resentment the difference in control and contribution, and I hope to all your marriages.